Attack on Titan Season 4 Episode 6, titled The Warhammer Titan. Following the insane hype of last week's Attack on Titan episode, The Declaration of War, we have Eren initiating his attack on Marley, and with the citizens fleeing and Marley retaliating, the Warhammer Titan appears, and also mysterious flying warriors take to the sky. From the moment Willy Tabby declared war on the island of Paradise, Eren instantly brought the war to him, and now the nation of Marley is a battlefield, but which side will end up victorious? So today I'm going to be breaking down and analysing this latest episode of Attack on Titan while clearing up some things you might have missed or weren't sure about. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other Attack on Titan content, however let's get right into it. This episode starts off with a short flashback of Willy Tiber before he was obviously killed by Eren. And the scenes we saw with Willy and the children of the Tiber family, I believe were anime original scenes as I don't record them in the manga, which was definitely a really nice touch from Mappa. I feel like the short scene of seeing Willy with the Tiber family before we get to the event straight after his death gave a little bit of empathy to the audience and a bit more insight into the type of person Willy was. Because personally I kind of liked Willy and I did feel kind of bad when and how he died but obviously most viewers were just like Eren let's go, decoration of war, that type of stuff so I feel like this scene and flashback gave a bit more meaning to his death if you get what I mean. And we also see Willy and Magath discussing the fact that Marty had infiltrators and the fact Willy would most likely end up dying should he go ahead with the speech. To end the conversation they were having, they both shook hands and Magav said that he was certain that Eldians were devils and that Marlians were also devils as well. We then cut to Willy Tiber being eaten by Eren and I saw someone say last week when I was watching the episode of Crunchyroll, it was in the comment section, but they were basically saying he already killed him, why did he have to eat him? Since last episode it was clear that Eren was throwing him inside of his mouth. But to answer that in case anyone's curious about it as well, after invading Marley, Eren was obviously aware of the Tiber family and the Warhammer Titan, but he had no way to know he was actually holding the Warhammer Titan. So upon killing Willy, he threw him into his mouth, in case he was the holder of the Warhammer Titan, in which then he could have actually taken his power. Although we found out soon that Willy wasn't the Warhammer Titan, it's actually his younger sister, it's just a nice touch and it really shows the efficiency of Eren's actions. This whole attack has been planned very well, which was even seen last episode when the mysterious soldier took the jaw and cart titans out of the fight by dropping them inside of the hole. But yeah, we have Eren eating Willy Tybar and then purely rampaging and killing all the officers and civilians alike, just really bringing it to the nation of Mali. And this is exactly like what happened when the titans broke into paradise all these years ago, it's just a complete mess. People screaming, running, but this time it's not the colossal and armor titans bringing the chaos, it's Eren Yeager. And it just again shows how well Attack on Titan can flip the script, because if you would have asked me all those years ago when I started watching, could I see Eren essentially becoming the enemy? I'd say no, but now he's started war against all these nations, but I mean obviously we know why he's doing it, it's because the whole world wants to wipe out Paradise, so he doesn't really have a choice. And amidst all of the destruction being caused by Eren, we have Zofia, one of the four warrior candidates, being crushed in half by flying debris, and Udo getting trampled to death in an attempt to save her, because everyone was just running for their lives that they didn't even notice him on the floor, which is kinda sad to see. But during all the chaos we have the appearance of the Warhammer Titan, who was Willy Tiber's younger sister, the maid. And a question for you guys watching this, who actually guessed that she was the Warhammer Titan, since we knew that one of the Tibers had the Warhammer and that they were in the room, but we didn't actually know who it was. But if you actually guessed it was her, props to you. After commending her brother for a job well done and saying that he fulfilled his role as a Tiber, she begins to transform into the Warhammer Titan, only for Eren to throw a punch midway through, which sends her flying into the wall. He then proceeds to start pummeling the Warhammer Titan's face over and over again, which was kind of funny to see through the use of CGI. We then have Magath firing off a single bullet at Eren, which was obviously ineffective, but signaled the beginning of Marley's counterattack. While the other soldiers are panicking at this Titan's sudden appearance and the fact that the Warhammer Titan is being beaten back, Magath reminds them that this is Eren Yeager, the holder of the Founding and Attack Titan, and now that he's come here to Marley, it saves them the trouble of going to Paradise themselves. So Marley is ready to fight back Eren with all they have, and while Magath sends them to their stations, Eren is impaled by a massive spear created by the Warhammer Titan, which sends him into the sky. We then cut back to Porco and Peak, who were trapped in the whole last episode, and Peak is telling Porco that help is on the way because they've sensed that something's going on outside and that Titans are likely fighting, so he's getting a bit frustrated. But the thing is, Peak being the smart lady she is and having a superior judgement, upon being taken away by the soldier she deemed to be suspicious, she informed the Panzer unit last episode that they should follow her because she doesn't trust the soldier, which just goes to show how useful she is. 
From the outside looking in, she was just hugging the Panzer unit because they fight with the cart titan during war, but she really had a whole contingency plan in case things went south, which in this case they did. With the Panzer unit coming to their rescue, Peek and Paul call back in the fight and they are preparing to check out the situation until they see soldiers flying around in the sky using ODM gear. And going a bit off topic here, it was so amazing to see the Paradis forces, or I guess you could say survey corps in their new black uniforms and just present in the show again since it's been a while. However, after seeing these people taking over the skies, Peek begins to understand how bad the situation actually is since she was on Paradis Island when Eren and the others fought the Beast, Colossal, Car, and Armor Titan. She knows that Paradis has brought the fight to them and that Eren is here, so everything is just getting insane at this point. We then come back to the main battle between Eren and the Warhammer Titan, and the Warhammer Titan is working alongside the Mali forces, who are shooting cannons at Eren in an attempt to take him out. The Warhammer then makes this giant mace weapon out of thin air and takes Eren's head clean off even though he was guarding against it and had his hardening active. Which just goes to show how powerful the Warhammer Titan is and how strong its ability to create weapons out of Titan hardening is, even against Eren Jaeger. With Eren's body appearing out of his Titan after the devastating blow from the Warhammer, the Warhammer Titan asks Eren if he has any final words and the whole scene, the build up and the OIC choice was absolutely amazing. As the Mali forces look on as the Warhammer Titan prepares to land the finishing blow on Eren, we see all the tension in their faces, but Eren looks completely calm as he says, it's time Mikasa. Mikasa then sneaks up behind the Warhammer Titan holding 8 thunder spears, 4 on each arm as she shoots them all into the Warhammer's nape. While the Mali army is confused, dozens of Paradis forces come up behind them unleashing the thunder spears. And also, take into account the amount the others are holding compared to Mikasa, the Ackermans are just built different. We then have Mikasa begging Eren to come back home and we see some old faces like Jan and Flock taking on Mali forces. Mikasa is worried about Eren and is saying that he's been here on Mali for too long and she's saying does he have any idea what he's done due to the result of all the innocent civilians who have been killed, even down to the children, and she's saying that Eren can't undo all of this. Eren then tells her that the Warhammer Titan still isn't dead and the fight isn't over. After barely escaping a shot from an arrow created by the Warhammer Titan, Eren begins to understand how the Warhammer's power works and he tells Mikasa to distract it and that if he's lucky he'll be able to eat the Warhammer Titan and take his power. We then see more battles unfold between the Paradis forces and Mali and Gabi is running through the streets to try and take action since she's confused at what's happening and the fact that her friends Udo and Zofia were killed. So Gabi's literally out for revenge at this point and the two guards, the ones we saw at the gate when Gabi, Falco, Zofia and Udo were leaving their warrior training, tell her to go home and that this isn't a place where she should be in. However, they end up being killed and one of them is killed by Sasha who was shooting from the rooftops and we then see Connie, Jan, Sasha and the other Paradise forces discussing the plan and if it's still moving forward. And I wanted to touch on this really quickly, imagine being Gabby in this situation with the security guards. Because I'm sure most of you didn't notice, but the gate guards were actually Malians and they were actually nice to Gabby and the others despite them being Eldians. And even before they died they told her to run, so you can tell that Gabby is really going through it right now. Which is why she ended up picking up the gun, because she clearly wants revenge on the enemy for ruining her town. We then cut back to Mikasa fighting against the Warhammer Titan using the Thunder Spears. And the Warhammer Titan isn't looking too well, to be honest it was getting bodied by Mikasa, but while the fight is going on, Eren realises the problem he's been having with the Warhammer Titan, he says that when it first materialised, it happened from the feet upwards instead of from his neck down, and he sees that the Warhammer Titan has a cord leading to under the stage and that's probably where his real body is. Eren leaps off the building he's standing on and transforms once again into a Titan, ripping the Warhammer's real body which is covered in a crystal similar to Annie's from under the stage. And after disconnecting the cord, the Warhammer's Titan body drops, so it's literally like plugging in something in real life, if you disconnect it it won't work. But Eren takes the crystal and prepares to eat the Warhammer Titan while everyone watches. And then out of nowhere we have Galliard aka the Jaw Titan leap onto Eren and try to back through his nape to steal the Founding Titan. And nobody was expecting this, so everyone had their guards down, Mikasa, Jang, Connie, Sasha, the other survey course members, but just as it looks like Eren is about to be eaten, humanity's strongest warrior Levi descends, slashing the jaw titan's mouth and preventing him from biting through Eren's nape. And I swear man, Levi always has to have the best entrances. After being saved by Levi, Eren removes the jaw titan from his back, and Galio tries to retreat, realising that he's in trouble, only to be met by the true devils of Paradise Island. And with that we come to the end of the episode. So that's it for the breakdown slash analysis of this episode and my honest thoughts on this episode was that it was amazing, there were some really good moments so I'd say it was an 8 to 9 out of 10, there was a lot of CGI parts I would have liked to be better 
but nonetheless it was really enjoyable to watch and the map and stuff are trying their hardest so who am I to complain? But yeah, war has broken out on Mali and everything is going down and it's really cool to see our main cast again with their new designs. So if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Also leave a like if you want more videos like this and be sure to comment down below any questions you may have in regards to the episode or just Attack on Titan in general and I'll be sure to answer them. Last but not least, check out some of the other Attack on Titan videos on the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.